Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this video is going to be a hopefully very short introduction to the Microsoft Office Excel user interface so that you have an idea of what you're looking at and getting to work with. So we're just going to dive right in. I'm using Microsoft Windows and the concepts in this will generally be transferable to other operating systems like the Mac, except for the fact that the Mac, for instance, does tend to have the things we'll be looking at linked in different places. And because I don't have a Mac, I don't have the ability to show Mac users where those places are. But I will try to make some comments along the way that will hopefully be helpful. But overall, these same kinds of tools are available in um, Mac and Linux. It's just in different places. So what we're going to do is I'm in the Microsoft Windows operating system desktop. I'm going to come over to my Windows Start button. And each of the uh, operating systems have some kind of start area where you can go and see initial menus and where your files and different things are. You may also have a recycle bin or a trash. They all have some sort of taskbar, most likely, if you choose to use one. And uh, you could pin the shortcuts to a lot of your favorite programs on there, as I have. And usually around the lower right-hand corner will be a start area of some kind. For Windows, it shows the Windows icon, and the Windows PCs will usually have a button built into them that shows the Windows icon. As I understand, Macs will probably show an Apple or, uh, you know, that sort of kind of curly looking icon, and then have a similar icon um, on a button on a Mac keyboard. You get in here, and you can go look in your own computer based on how your files are organized in your start area. Or you could just use search, and I'm just going to use excerpt, the search to get Excel. Now, one big note about Excel here. This is for the fully installed desktop version of Excel. Excel comes in a lighter, um, free online version that actually could do quite a bit of things for you, but it's not nearly as robust, doesn't have all the options, all the know-how that you really need if you're going to be taking, say, a five-credit class in it or really wanting to get a leg up in the workplace by having some really strong Excel skills. Now, I could be wrong. There are people who make the online versions of everything just sing for them, and that's wonderful. But that's not what we're covering here. We're also not covering older versions of Excel. What we're currently looking at is Excel 365 um, that is basically considered to be the 2021 version with all the updates that have been happening between then and now, which is in April of 2023. And hopefully the information in this video will be current enough over the next year or two without any major changes. But it is for the full version of Excel. Now in Windows, Excel will open up usually with a start screen like this. There is an option you can choose to not have the start screen open up. But this is where I think the default is for most people. This is what is called kind of the backstage area of Excel in Windows, although it doesn't have everything listed that it could. But the idea is here you're getting to see that you can open a blank workbook. You can get a tour of Excel. So if you've never worked with this program before, particularly the full version, I'd actually encourage you to take a, a little tour here and let Microsoft Excel show you a little bit about itself. You also have a couple of tutorials that are built in here, which is really great. And then there are templates that you can um, use. And then what will happen is if you've been using Excel for a while and you've been, if you clearly see I do all sorts of things in here for my, my workplace at the moment, um, you can have files that you've recently used. You can pin files. So say I was going to be using this roster over and over again, I could pin it. And I can even see files that have been shared with me by other people. You can also, um, there's a recommended for you section, which I tend to collapse because I don't need recommendations. But if you see this and you are and enjoy playing with it, great. But if you don't want to see it, you can click that and then you can collapse it. You have, this is the home area. This is where you can make a new file or you can open an existing file as well as do some other things that we'll look at later. Right now, we're just going to open a blank workbook. Click this, and this is what you'll get. Now, a blank workbook 
by default will actually open up with three sheets. I've, I've made my default one sheet. That'll be a difference that you'll see. But overall, let's just look at the general Windows layout of the user interface. You basically have the program, the whole user interface, which is bounded by this green bar at the top, and then this you know gray bar at the bottom that says like accessibility, ready, and it has some views in here. This green bar at the top is basically where it, you get information of what file you're in, if it has a name or not, or you can actually search in your uh, document. Or actually, no, this is for features. It's not the same as using the search in the document, which will be handled later. But this would allow you to um, have Microsoft tell you stuff and often propel you out to a website. This is showing that I'm using this. Um, this is uh, upcoming features. I'm not going to mess with that. This is where we can see the ribbon display options, which I will discuss in a moment. This minus sign means that you can minimize the window. This means you can restore or make the window just smaller, and you can close the exit the entire program. If you've worked with any Microsoft products, a lot of this is going to look familiar. Green seems to be the signature color of Excel. Next, what you have is your menu up here. The menu in the ancient days when I was a youngin and first using Excel would have lots of drop down boxes. We got used to that. But several years back, three or four versions ago now, they replaced having only drop down menus with this, what they call a ribbon, which is like a really, really thick toolbar that has a lot of visual icons and some of them with this, what's spelled out what they are next to them. The, and it's called a ribbon. So you may see this referred to as a menu item, as a tab, or as a ribbon, which will be referring to the tab and its ribbon, like insert in its ribbon, page layout and its ribbon. So um, these are the core menu items for most folks. We'll go over these in a little bit of detail, but first let's talk about the ribbon. Each ribbon giant toolbar here it tends to be broken up into groups. Over the years, Microsoft has tried to intuit from a lot of user feedback and their own use and their own research how people process what they're looking at and what they may need. So the Home tab, in, for instance, is what I consider sort of the kitchen sink of the uh, Excel. When you hear throwing some everything in except the kitchen sink, this is the kitchen sink where you've got a little bit of stuff from a variety of different areas in the program. The clipboard, for instance, is where when you copy something, you actually can look at the clipboard to see recent things that were copied up to about 20 items. You can paste from here, and then this... Format Painter allows you to pick up a style from a cell or a row or a column and store that style in the clipboard long enough to choose another row and apply that style over it. That's really cool. The font area here is where you can basically mess with your fonts of you know, titles, subtitles. There's no actual styles per se in Excel like there are in Word, but you can make you know, the words bigger. You can make them bold, you can make them italicized underlines, you could add a background color to a cell or to a row. So for instance, I'm just going to say LJ was here, period. And then I could come in here and I could select the cell. This is where the text is and I could bold it or unbold it. I could make the cell background color bright yellow or I could click this drop down and remove that fill. I could make the text my favorite color green, or I could make it go back to the automatic black that is part of the theme of this. Alignment has to do with how information is positioned in a cell. So for instance, if I make this bigger by dragging like I did, we'll talk about that more, you notice that the text here is at the bottom left-hand side of the cell. That may or may not be your choice or the choice of the workplace you get into. But if you happen to want to choose the alignment, uh, change it. This is bottom alignment. You can change it to top. You can change it to center, right, that sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Um, other things with alignment include wrapping text and merging and such. The numbers is where if you put numbers in, you could change them to things like currency, or dates, 
let's say March 2. So here we could use this to change this to $100, or we could change it to a comma instead, meaning that if it was $1,000, 100, 105, you get the commas in there, see? Here, this you could change to different date formats. This will be looked at in other videos as well. Styles, there are some styles for the Excel, but it isn't about making styles of headers and subheaders. It's about dealing with things that help you sort and analyze and categorize um, information. So there's conditional formatting, changing things into a table object, etc. In the home tab, there's also cells that allows you to insert and delete cells and rows and columns. There's some editing that you could do, etc. Each of these tabs will figure into different lessons that you'll have, but the insert tab in general is so that you can insert things like images, shapes, smart art, word art, text boxes, and of course, one of our favorite things will be charts and graphs and pivot tables, which are entirely different subjects but are part of the insert. I want also you can insert hyperlinks from here. Page layout has to do with how the overall document is going to look, either the worksheet or the workbook. An Excel workbook is a collection of worksheets, and each worksheet has its own tab, as you see down here, and has its workspace. And in here, you can choose a theme for your document that uses a certain color palette, a certain font palette. You can set your margins, whether the page will be wider than it is tall, which is orientation the page size, which is whether it will print out on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper or 8.5 by 14 and so on. Print area is something interesting. If you've got a spreadsheet with, say, 12 columns and you really only want to print seven of them that are together, you can set a print area that does not print the remaining columns. There are all sorts of neat things in here like that. Formulas is all about the formulas that you use for calculating whether it's a formula you write or built-in functions, which are basically formulas that have very specific steps and needs to them that Excel has created to be used. And as you can see, we have a whole function library group here. And then next to that is defined names. This has to do with if you have, a say, a, a several rows and columns of data, and you want to select it to be used at a later time for some reason, you can actually select it and give that selection a name, even if it's a smaller selection within a much bigger series of rows and columns. There is formula auditing to try to help you identify errors in formulas. Data has mostly to do with the acquiring of data from other places and then the sorting and filtering and making changes to your existing data, how it looks, how it works, etc. Review has to do with checking your spelling, um, looking at workbook statistics, checking the accessibility. If you bring in charts and smart art and images and icons, you'll need to make sure there's alt text attached to them so that if somebody is using a screen reader to try to interpret some data on a spreadsheet, that everything will go into the screen reader as accessibly as possible. You'll be able to add things like comments. You'll be able to protect your worksheet or your entire workbook. That's all part of the potential review process. View is a, a whole whole ribbon that's to, is set up so that you could choose the view the way you look at things in uh, Microsoft Excel. Automate is something where you can get into creating macros. Help allows you to look for some information from Microsoft for help. If you have a program like Creative, Adobe Creative Suite that actually has Acrobat in it, the Acrobat should show up. I actually don't remember off the top of my head if Acrobat is built in in this detail to Excel, although Microsoft has worked to add PDF capability at the basic level to all of their programs that can use the PDFs. Power Pivot is something you probably won't see on your screen. This is actually an add-in I put in for some additional studies I was doing, but it is part of Microsoft, one of their core add-ins for more advanced infographics and data analysis work. But mostly you're going to be looking at home through help. And file. We haven't covered this yet. 
we'll cover that in a moment, but I want to touch on a little bit more about the overall user interface inside of the worksheet. Below the ribbon, you have this kind of bar area that has this that I've clicked on now. It's called a formula bar. The formula bar will show you what's inside of a cell, but it will also allow you to write formulas in a cell. So like if I, I could either write it in the cell or here, but say I wanted to add a couple of numbers. A basic formula would be as simple as telling Excel that this, for, uh, this cell needs an answer to a question. The answer is the it equals. Something has to equal, and that will give you the answer. And in here, I'm going to do 2 plus 3. The answer in this cell should be 5. What I'm seeing here when I click on the cell is the number 5, but in the formula bar, I can see the formula that made the number 5. However, this does not have a formula, so I just see the text that's in the cell. Same thing with this number, although in this formula bar, I see the raw version of the number, not the formatted version. And then in here, the date does seem to correspond. Excel is very complex, and there are decisions being made behind the scenes about what you'll see and what you won't. Um, but the formula bar is very useful. Right to the left of the formula bar is a little FX um, symbol that allows you to insert a function. So a function would be, a as I've said before, a complex formula that you can use that's built in to Excel. And if you want to, instead of always going to the formula ribbon here, you can simply click this little insert function and you'll get an insert function panel that will let you start doing your work. That'll be covered in a different video, but that's what it's for. If I'm in this formula and I were to come here and make a change to this, say I want to change it to 2 plus 4, what happens here is that next, just to the left of the insert function, there's an X and a checkbox. When you're not hovering over them, they're gray, but when you hover over this, the check mark means that, yes, I want to keep this change, or X, no, I don't. That's, and then finally, this little area here is the address of the cell you're in. So I am now currently in cell H7. This is cell C1. This is cell A3. And learning what your cell addresses are can be really helpful, especially if you're following instructions and someone asks you to select cells A1 through 7. Easy way to do that is to hold your left mouse button down, assuming your mouse is set up to the defaults, and then drag to 7 and then let go, and you have a selection. Or you could select A1, hold your shift key down, and then press A7, and there's your selection there. But notice how this address bar is saying that you've selected seven rows by one cell. It doesn't say which seven rows by one cell, but now notice here when I click this, sorry, I clicked away, notice that I've clicked seven rows by nine cells. Another thing this will be very useful for is later on when you go up to the uh, formulas and you define a name of a range of cells, you give it a name, the name will be something that you can see in this drop down too. So say you have a spreadsheet of 12, or spread a workbook of 12 worksheets, and you don't remember where the sales reps are, you could look here, and if there's a range named sales reps, you'll be able to click on it, and it will take you right over to the proper worksheet and the cell range. It's very useful. This area here, that I've been typing in is the official work, workbook um, work area. It is um, got columns and it has rows and each column starts with an address letter and it could go on for a really long time. I mean you could just keep scrolling over to the right. Whee! I think it probably could go all the way to ZZ and then from there I think that's where you start hitting the maximum and uh, so that's that's what happens there for the columns. Column A, B, C, D. Same with the rows. The rows can go down really far. You can select lots and lots of rows, and you see each row has a number in front of it. So that is how you get this address A4. We are in column A, row 4. Here we are in column F, row 9. That's how that address works. And when you're actually working in here, and I'm going to delete some of these things, 
the way it works is you don't actually you actually type excuse me you don't type in a column and you don't type in a row you type cell by cell each cell is its own encapsulated little piece of data it's all interconnected to each other if you tell excel that it needs to be but basically this is one piece of data lj is here is another piece of data and another piece of data is one thousand so that's that's what happens if you click into the cell and you could type now the cell actually works two ways you could select the cell or you could double click into the cell and one of the things that will happen is you could click a cell to copy it so say i'm going to actually i'm going to get rid of a couple of things here select the cell and i want to copy this cell and i want to paste the same information down below there we go However, if I were to click in this cell and copy this information and then click another cell and try to paste it, it can't do it. Oh, yes, it can. Sorry, apparently um, it works the other way around. Sometimes if you click here, click this, and then you go inside another cell, it can't, it can't actually paste that. So you have to kind of be aware whether you're selecting a cell to do something with it or whether you've clicked inside the cell or whether you're in a cell and working in the formula bar. It becomes more intuitive the more practice you get. Down here at the bottom of the worksheet, each sheet will have a little tab that tells you its name. The default name for Excel will start with sheet one. And if you add cells by clicking, excuse me, add sheets by clicking this plus, see what happens? Sheet two, sheet three, sheet four. You can double click sheet one and change it to LJ was here, or whatever name that you want to give it that is intuitive to the work that you're trying to do. You can also right click on a sheet and delete it. You can click on a sheet and press your delete button. Nothing will happen there. But if you were to click that and go look at insert, no, no, home. And then we go over here to delete in the cells. You can come down here and you can delete the sheet from there. You can also move sheets around by holding your cursor down and dragging. So that's pretty neat. And then finally, you have this little area here. And if you have several sheets open, you'll have a little divider that you could pull so you can see more of the sheet titles in here. Finally, you have what's called the status bar. The status bar, basically ready mode, just means you can start editing and doing your work here. You'll see different icons that will pop up. There's no macros going on. There's been an accessibility check because it's checking as it goes. Over here, you have three of the common views. You don't have to always go up to view to choose whether you want the page break preview or anything else. You can come down. This is the normal view, which is where you can see everything without headers and footers. This is the page layout view. So if your document needs to have repeating information on each page. You can add a header or a footer. The footer would be at the bottom of the page. And you would need to scroll down here so you can see the footer. There we go, see, footer. And then here you have the page break preview. And what this means is that if you actually set a print uh, preview and you set specific page breaks because the columns were gonna, you know, run off to one column on one page, you would actually be able to see some page breaks. There's nothing to see in here right now. But the normal view tends to be what most people work in. They find it kind of the easiest and most intuitive. And then you have a slider here, which can increase the view you're working in or decrease it. And you can also click on the number and get a little box here that says, oh, yes, I want to actually work in 73% and do that. So that's a little bit about the overall user interface. The last thing we haven't covered is something called the file tab. And this is what's mostly what the big difference between um, Windows and Macs and other operating systems. Microsoft created Windows and they created Excel. So they created things with an eye to the PC Windows operating system user. 
And Macs have a different way, and their users have a different way of looking for information and of organizing information. So the Apple company and Microsoft does not seem to have coordinated on presenting all of the Microsoft information in the same place, the same way for all users, regardless of operating system. But in Windows, the File tab gives you something called the Backstage area. The idea here is this is something that you could do that affects the whole document as well as your use of the program. So you see now there are more things listed here than when we simply first opened Excel and saw the workbook, tour, templates, and a few files. You saw home, new, and open, and then I think a couple of other things at the bottom. But now you see more options here because we have an existing document. In here, we can see an information page for the document, like who created it, add some metadata. You can inspect the workbook for accessibility, compatibility with older programs. You could choose to protect the workbook from here. You can see what version history this is if you are versioning the file by working with a team and so on. You can save your document as you go. And the first time you actually need to save a document, say I'm in here and I want to save it, I go to save. It's going to ask me to create a name and tell it a location to put it. So the first time I save it will actually automatically go to save as. After this, once the document has been saved, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this to my desktop. Okay, I'm going to just call this temp file. Excel will automatically, assuming I use the native format, it will automatically save it to an Excel workbook and it will add the extension of .xlsx for me. I do not need to type that extension. A lot of times I'll see files from students that will say file name xlsx.xlsx. You don't have to type that in yourself. There are other formats a file can be saved into, like an older version of it like 1997 to 2003, although you will get a warning saying that a lot of the stuff that you're doing in this version aren't compatible with an older version. You could save to a comma delineated file, which is kind of more like raw data with each cell of text having commas after it, but that can allow it to be put into a database or some other place. There's all sorts of other things in here you could do, um, including Macintosh text, XML spreadsheets and such, but we're going to just stick with saving temp file as a standard Excel workbook. And I could save it, but what will happen is it will default to a documents folder. You never, ever, ever want to do this. Here's why. Folks that get in the habit of saving their files to the default documents folder of their program or of their computer will end up with hundreds and hundreds of files, especially not if they don't really give it a, a useful name. I mean, how many times might you call something temp file or temp or whatever? What you always want to do is decide where you're going to put your document before you save it. That way you can find it again, you can know the context. So in that case, instead of just saving it here, you want to browse and then you want to go look on your computer. So in another class, I was actually creating a school folder, a course one, and this is where I created some subfolders as an example. So let's just say this was a section one assignment that you were actually going to have to say example, Excel user interface. So you might say example, Excel, UI, and then I put my last name on it. And notice how it's already going to put the .xlsx here for me and tell me it's saving it as an Excel workbook, which means when I reopen it, I can edit it again. I've saved it, and there we go. Now, if I come up here, and I say, oh, I've got another sheet. I don't know where that came from. Oh, it moved. That's right. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to edit this by deleting this text. I just selected it and used my delete button. Now I have only one line of text and I want to save it. I don't have to do a file save as again because file save as is telling you to create a name for it and create a location for it. It now has a name, which we can see up here, most of it. You can click that arrow and it will show you a little bit more. And it shows you where the location is. I will just have to hit save. Control S as in Sam for save is the shortcut key, or I can just come up here and do save.
So that's the difference between those. I could save this as an Adobe PDF. I can also save it as a PDF under Save As, under one of these variations here. The Adobe PDF is different, slightly different than the Excel PDF. Excel does have the PDF in here somewhere, I believe. I will never see it while I'm looking at it, looking for it here. But the Adobe um, PDF is, is reliant on having the creative suite that I do. You can print from here. So not only can you see the info about your page, but you can see how the page is going to look when you print it. You can set print settings if you have a printer at home. You can you know, make some other changes here. You can share this document by sending it to the cloud on um, Microsoft OneDrive or maybe to SharePoint. You can export this to a PDF instead of saving it as one. That's basically the same thing in my opinion, but apparently they wanted you to have these different options. More, you could take a look at your account information. This is how you know that you've got something from a school that you're in. You can look under more for options. Now options is great because this is where you can make changes in Excel and how it works for you. There's a lot of general options and this is something it will take each person getting used to Excel to start working with. Most of the defaults will be fine for you. But you may find that you don't always want Excel to open up with three sheets. You might want it to open up with only one. Here on General, when creating new workbooks, include this many sheets. I changed it to one. You could open it with five sheets. Maybe you're going to only use workbooks for annual projects where you need one sheet for every month and then a summary sheet. So every workbook you need will need 13 sheets. So you could change that. I've made it so that my default font size is 16, so it's easier for me to read, even at 100%. But you could change that, so I believe it defaults probably to 12 or so. The default view for new sheets is normal view, which is um, what I showed you the differences down in the um, status bar, how you could change those. But if you really wanted to see things always in page break preview, you could change that. So you want to look through these different tabs to find out what your options are. Formulas. Formulas will normally calculate automatically. Um, data. This gives you some information about some of how data would be handled. But you have to get more experienced with Excel to know what it is you want to have happen. Proofing tends to be about if you run the spell check. The defaults tend to ignore words in uppercase, um, but you can, or excuse me, may not, but you could choose to. So if you use uppercase for a lot of your headers or something, you could choose to, um, to ignore those. Save, this gives you information about how and where things are saved. If you want a background save, if you want a, a, a um, auto recover save, etc. Language would have to do if you need to add another dictionary to interpret in Spanish or French or another language that you work in as, as your first language. Accessibility can give you some information about that. Advanced gives you additional options. And again, uh, each person kind of needs to look through the, themselves. Probably leave most things as a default until you're really familiar with the program and know what you want to do with it and what you want to change. And you would also probably want to consult the web to get some advice from other people who are very proficient with Excel of things that do and don't help. Because you don't want to start setting weird options and then not remember what it is that you changed if you hate it. Although you usually can at the bottom of it or somewhere in there have the ability to change it back to default. You could customize the ribbon. These are the ribbons. A recommendation here, if you're a beginning to intermediate user, don't customize the ribbons themselves. They are basically tied. What happened here? Oh, there we are. They are basically tied to very specific areas. They're like the file tab, the, the let's see, the popular commands. There's... Uh, uh, to do well you can look you can look for commands not in the ribbon you can add things but like the file tab has very specific things that are going to be in it um, all tabs you could take a look here and then you can expand and you can see these are the different groups you want to be really really careful with the main ribbons don't mess with those but that being said part of the neat thing of this top green bar is that you have something called a quick access toolbar 
So for instance, um, for some reason I have, well, autosave is on, I could turn it off. But up here, the automatic the things added to the customize or excuse me, to the quick access toolbar is the save button and the redo and the undo. But you can add more things to it. So say in the quick access toolbar, I want say I don't want this turn auto save on and off because it takes up space. I can remove it. Click it, remove, that goes away. And I could go find it again. But say I happen to always want to have the fill color available for cells. I can add it. And then I can, come on. Ah, what's going on? Sometimes it doesn't want to let me grab it. Oh, there we go. I've got save, fill color, undo, redo, and I click OK. And notice how that one button for auto save went away. And I now have this fill color. So that's the kind of thing you can do with a background. Uh, backspace area. But anyway, some of that information is going to be in different locations in the Mac. And again, it may be in a couple of the Excel drop downs in the Mac, but also it's likely to be in the overall Excel user interface top bar where you can see the little Excel, or not Excel, the little Apple icon um, at the very top left hand side you could drop that down and that can tell you if there's places to change your properties and such and if there's a file up there you can also click that and there may be a couple of options for changing access to different things and getting to some of this backstage area that we just looked at like where you're going to print where you get your file information in order to preview it before you do anything or add metadata tags to it and so on so anyway, I hope that gives you enough of a basic user interface look at Microsoft Excel. That's what we'll do, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.